Is Qualcomm losing its biggest customers? That's exactly what's happening, and the reasons are simpler than you might think. Both Samsung and Apple have started pulling back from using Qualcomm's chips, and while it might sound like a bold move, it's really about cost and control. Let's talk about Samsung first. For years, Samsung has used two different processors in its phones, Qualcomm's Snapdragon in some regions, and its own Exynos chips in others. The Snapdragon versions usually get better reviews, mostly because they tend to offer more consistent performance and battery life. That's why Samsung decided to use only Snapdragon chips globally for its Galaxy S23 and Galaxy S25 series. But now, they're changing course again. The upcoming Galaxy S26 lineup is expected to bring back the split approach. Some markets will get the Snapdragon version, while others, especially Europe, might receive the new Exynos 2600 chip. This processor, built on a 2 nanometer process, is still in development and might not be perfect yet. There are even reports of ongoing production issues, but despite that, Samsung seems determined to make it work. They don't just want to reduce their reliance on Qualcomm, they want to eventually stop using Snapdragon altogether. It's not because Exynos is better today, but because Samsung believes it can close the gap soon. Apple is also moving in a similar direction, though its focus is slightly different. Instead of replacing the main processor, Apple wants to replace the modem chip, the part that connects your phone to mobile networks. Right now, Apple uses Qualcomm modems, but they've been working on an in-house alternative for years. That effort is finally starting to pay off. The iPhone 16e is the first model to include Apple's own modem chip, called the Apple C1. It may not yet match Qualcomm's performance, especially in terms of speed and power efficiency, but it works well. Enough for Apple to use it in a real product. That's a big step. And with the base model iPhone 17 and the upcoming iPhone 17 Air, also expected to feature the C1 modem, it's clear that Apple is serious about moving away from Qualcomm. Eventually, it looks like all iPhones will be powered entirely by Apple-made components. But why go through all this effort when Qualcomm's chips are already fast and reliable? The main reason is money. Buying chips from Qualcomm isn't cheap. Samsung reportedly spent around 400 million US dollars just to put Snapdragon chips in all Galaxy S25 models. Apple, on the other hand, is tired of paying high licensing fees for using Qualcomm's technology. By making their own chips, both companies save a significant amount in the long run. There's also the advantage of control. When a company builds its own chips, it can better integrate them with its hardware and software. That leads to smoother performance and allows for more customization. Even if the in-house chips are slightly behind right now, both Samsung and Apple believe they'll eventually catch up. And when that happens, they'll no longer need Qualcomm at all. For most people, these changes won't make a huge difference. Whether a phone has a Snapdragon, Exynos, or C1 chip, the day-to-day -day experience is often similar. As long as the phone runs well, takes good photos, and lasts through the day, users are satisfied. Only tech enthusiasts might notice small differences in benchmarks or heat management. So what happens to Qualcomm now? It's still a big name in the smartphone world, but losing Apple and possibly Samsung could hurt. As more brands build their own chips, Qualcomm's role may slowly shrink. Do you think this shift will make phones better or worse? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech updates. The tech industry is eagerly anticipating Samsung's next move as the Galaxy S26 promises to take smartphone performance to new heights. While the Galaxy S25 has already set a high bar, the S26 is expected to deliver even more impressive advancements, particularly in the realm of 5G connectivity. Rumors suggest that the upcoming flagship will offer significantly faster 5G speeds, potentially up to 25% quicker than its predecessor. This leap forward is likely to be powered by state-of-the-art hardware, including a next-generation Qualcomm processor and modem, which could redefine the standards for mobile network performance. Central to the Galaxy S26 capabilities is expected to be Qualcomm's latest chipset, rumored to be named the Snapdragon 8 Elite 2. This processor is set to bring a range of performance enhancements, but the most notable upgrade is likely to come from its integrated modem. Qualcomm recently introduced its newest 5G modem, the X85 5G modem RF, which is speculated to be a key feature of the Snapdragon 8 Elite 2. Compared to the X80 modem found in the Galaxy S25, the X85 promises a substantial boost in network performance, 
with download speeds of up to 12.5 Gbps and upload speeds of 3.7 Gbps. This improvement will translate to faster downloads, smoother streaming, and more responsive gaming, ensuring users can enjoy a seamless online experience. The X85 modem also comes equipped with an AI-powered data engine designed to optimize network performance in real time. This means users can expect faster and more stable connections for activities like gaming, clearer voice and video calls, and seamless switching between Wi-Fi and mobile networks. Whether you're in the middle of an important video call or immersed in an intense gaming session, the Galaxy S26 is expected to deliver a consistently reliable connection. Additionally, a modem's AI capabilities are said to enhance battery efficiency, allowing users to enjoy these advanced features without worrying about draining your battery too quickly. While Qualcomm's technology is expected to play a major role in the Galaxy S26, Samsung has a history of using its own Exynos processors in certain regions. If the company chooses to go this route, the S26 could feature the Exynos 2600 chipset paired with the Exynos Motive 5400. Interestingly, this Motive is rumored to offer even faster speeds than Qualcomm's X85, with potential download speeds reaching up to 14.79 Gbps. However, it remains unclear whether Samsung will adopt this approach globally or stick with Qualcomm's solution. Regardless of the choice, users can expect a significant upgrade in network performance and overall device capabilities. The competition in the 5G space is intensifying, with Apple also making progress in developing its own 5G modems. The iPhone 16e is rumored to feature Apple's first in-house modem, the C1, which is expected to prioritize power efficiency. However, it reportedly lacks support for Moonwave 5G, a technology that enables the fastest 5G speeds. This could give Qualcomm's X85 modem an advantage, particularly for users who demand the highest possible performance from their devices. Qualcomm has also highlighted additional benefits of the X85, including improved location tracking for better navigation and AI-driven 5G optimizations that further enhance the user experience. Beyond its impressive 5G capabilities, the Galaxy S20 Sticks is expected to set a new benchmark for flagship smartphones. The combination of faster speeds, advanced AI optimizations, and improved battery efficiency makes it a compelling upgrade over the Galaxy S25. For users who frequently download large files, stream high-definition content, or engage in mobile gaming, these enhancements could make a noticeable difference in day-to-day -day usage. That is it for today. Stay tuned for more updates as we get closer to the official release, and let us know your thoughts on these exciting advancements in the comments below. Apple might be on the verge of something huge with the iPhone 17 Pro. Recent reports suggest the company could get access to TSMC's cutting-edge 2 nanometer chips earlier than expected, possibly by 2025. If this turns out to be true, it would mean a significant jump in both performance and battery life for the iPhone 17 Pro, making it one of the most powerful smartphones Apple has ever made. Up until now, it was widely believed that the iPhone 17 lineup would use chips based on TSMC's third generation 3 nanometer process known as N3P. The current iPhone 16 models already run on second generation 3 nanometer chips called N3E, offering slight improvements in speed and efficiency. While these upgrades make a difference, they are more of an incremental step rather than a breakthrough. However, the latest report from Digitimes changes everything. It claims Apple could introduce two nanometer chips in the iPhone 17 Pro, which would be much earlier than expected. But what does a two nanometer chip actually mean for everyday use? Early estimates suggest this technology could boost performance by up to 15% while improving efficiency by around 30% compared to the iPhone 16 Pro's 18 Pro chip. That means not only a faster experience, but also